clear where things were going. Uh, a lot has changed over the last year, a lot more than I expected to change, to be honest. And part of it's because of the involvement of a bunch more people, as you see. Um, I, but a, a year ago, it wasn't clear that it was even going to be in 2.9. I mean, the, par the party line was no new tools that haven't been out for a release. So the plan was at the last minute before 2.9 was released that it was going to be stealthed. Uh, but somehow they just forgot to stealth it. <laughs> so, so it actually uh, showed up in 2.9. Uh, at least I think they forgot to stealth it. Um, so anyway, I, I'm, I'm assuming most of you probably know what Lessons is, but I've, I've left in some of the basic slides just in case you didn't know. Um, so, you know, what, what is Lessons? It's, it's, um, we really did it for, online, for fully online instruction uh, because until Lessons, we didn't have a really good way of, of presenting material. I mean, you had resources. You could put things into resources. You had a bunch of tools. But you didn't have any way to put together a lesson that said, first I want you to look at this and then do a test and, and so forth. Uh, so, so we put this together. Um, and the, I mean, the other issue we had is we didn't, all the tools are sort of grab bags. Uh, and people liked the idea. And we have another, a couple other uh, CMSs on campus. And they tended to organize by, you know, the left barge margin, you have week one, week two, week three. And we had no real way to do that in Sakai because all we had was a bunch of, of tools. So, so the goals really were to provide some organization for normal courses and, and to provide a way to do fully long run instruction. Um, and, you know, I have to say that an awful lot of what we do now would not be possible without lessons. Uh, there was, there's a sort of inspiration, uh, the, the Sakai 3 uh, page editor, you know, with the ability to like stick widgets in. in. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have enough manpower to really duplicate the UI, and, and I wish I had. But I had, you know, like one high school sophomore for two months uh, was what built the tool. And, and so there were limits to, to how much we could actually do. Uh, these were the, the goals, and most of them I think I've mentioned. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we, we, we have adopted a few goals that I wasn't sure were a good idea at the time. Some have worked and some haven't. One, I don't know if it's obvious to you, but you do not necessarily have to have a strict hierarchy with pages and subpages. It is designed so that if you want to have a sequence, where you just go through and you have to do a page and then another page and so forth, and they're not like really sub-pages, we can actually support that. Uh, it's not obvious, but when you create a sub-page, one of the options is this isn't really a sub-page, it's a next page, and that lets you just do a, a, a sequence. Uh, we also had, and, but I don't think very many people have used that. The, the option that, that I was hoping nobody would use, people actually have which is the ability to, to put limits, to say you can't do this until you've satisfactorily completed that. Um, I don't actually like that. I don't like it as a student. I'm not sure I even like it as an instructor. But we had enough people say they, they thought they wanted it that, that, we, put, that we put it in. Um, it was supposed to support multimedia, and you know, it does a reasonable job of embedding video. Uh, I, I won't say it's perfect, but, but, it, but it's OK. Um, it has a reasonably modern UI, and, and I think we mostly succeeded at that. We, again, if we had more time, we could have done a little more. Uh, and then we wanted to, to do you know, full integration with everything, uh, with the rest of Sakai, with the IMS standards. Uh, you know, I got beat up in the, the first time I presented at this group because we didn't have full group support, so we have full group support. And one of the big problems in engineering the tool is that people really want full integration with the rest of Sakai. If somebody you know, copies a site uh, and they have a, uh, a forum in, in the old site, of course the copy isn't, the forum is a draft, so you can't actually use it. And so we get bug reports that say, you know, why can't I click on the forum and have it actually work? Well, the reason is that it's, that it's still draft. And so I keep getting pushed to do things like check the exact status of every object in the tool and try to reflect it in the Lessons UI. Well, I'm sorry, guys, I cannot duplicate the entire UI of every other tool inside Lessons. But I have, over time, gotten more and more integration. I have to warn you that there's a performance trade-off. 
because every time I reflect more details about the underlying tool, I have to do more queries. And the poor guys who are trying to run 6,000 simultaneous users may kill me. <laughs> uh, so, so there are these trade-offs. Uh, and another thing that I tried to do, and, and again, I'm not, still not sure whether this was a success or not, is I tried to allow a bit of interaction. So it wasn't just a flat presentation of material. So we have student comments, which are basically a clone of Facebook comments. Uh, and we have student content pages, which were actually done for a specific course. We had a photography course uh, that, that was being done online. And they, they gave the students the assignment of, of uploading their best photographs. And they wanted other students to be able to comment on it. And so that was the, the genesis of the student content widget uh, and, and the fact that you can do comments on, on it. And in, in the next release, we will also have the ability to do rubrics uh, uh, on, on the student content page. Um, so what's happened since last year? Another piece of, of student interaction is inline questions. And we have had in some of our training uh, groups, we've had requests for this. They want to present something and then give a simple question to make sure whether the student is, is ready to go on. So uh, we have, have simple inline questions. They're not very sophisticated in their grading. Uh, when, you, when you say that you, they can't go on, it's really just if they answer the question, we don't even have it, they have to give the right answer because it's sort of silly. I mean, they can just go back and change the answer it's not clear to us that, that that buys them anything. Uh, but we have inline questions. I'll, I'll show you a, a screenshot. We, and they can also be used as polls, which is something that people have, have asked for. Um, and, because, and there's a, a poll, uh, which I'll show you, a display of, of the output. The second thing we added was, was the rubric uh, on the student content page. Um, common cartridge export, I've just recently mostly finished. There's a few things in Samago that, that, that don't, they, I, I don't export feedback on uh, test items yet, but, but that'll be coming shortly. Uh, the problem with developing lessons uh, is that because its goal is to unify everything else in Sakai, um, when I do something like common cartridge export, it's not just a lessons project. It's a Samago project because I have to export all of the, the Samago question banks in, in common cartridge format. You know, if I were a dictator, what I would do is I'd tell the Stanford guys, you produce me a common cartridge export of your tool. But not being a dictator, I end up having to do all this stuff with all the other tools myself. Um, we've had a bit of focus on... Um, reliability and, and smooth behavior, and the, the Michigan people are really doing much of that work. So it's, it's really on, it should be on the next slide, which is, is coming up. Um, the, the things that are on this page are not in 2.9, uh, but they're not in 2.9.2 in particular. However, they'll start showing up in 2.9.3. Some of this has to do with what the TCC is willing to accept in the, le in the way of changes to the 2.9 branch, but I'm I'm pretty committed to, to doing at least common cartridge export in 293, and I hope they'll be willing to accept some of the other stuff. Uh, let me show you. So here are things that I show is in, I, when I did the slides, they were in progress. They've actually mostly been finished. Uh, and, and this shows one of the changes, which is I'm, I'm getting people from other uh, sites telling me we'd like to contribute. So the folks at the University of Michigan who are, are going to be using it in the fall have said, uh, well, you know, there's some, some UI that, that isn't very smooth, and, and so they've, they've improved it. That is, I believe, actually finished and waiting for the end of the conference when I get a chance to go back and check it in. Um, I believe, I'm not sure whether the search work is finished, but I mean, would, it is finished? Okay. So I think all three of these are actually finished and, and, re and waiting for me to, to stick them into the, the, the code base. Uh, so search is just integration with, you know, so the content and lessons is part of search. And then Project Kitai uh, has contributed a bunch of, of slash direct 
uh, you know, ways of getting out all the various content in, in lessons. I haven't really looked at it, so I don't know exactly what it does. But the intent is to provide mobile support for, for lessons. Um, so, you know, what's, what's coming up? Well, one of my problems here is that I'm lousy at predicting the future because I never last year predicted all the things that we have now. So my current thought is that we've already got an awful lot of functionality in lessons, maybe almost too much, and that we really need to focus on lots of details about getting it to work nicely. People who've tried the grading uh, are not entirely happy with it. There's just a bunch of sort of making the interaction smooth. I think I'm going to rethink, probably in the process of checking in University of Michigan's changes, I need to rethink what the buttons at the top are like. Currently we have some of the objects have separate buttons at the top and some of them are in the pull down menu. I, I think we want to slightly reorganize that to make it a little bit clearer. So there's a bunch of just minor stuff we can do that will respond to you know, faculty concerns about finding difficulties. And so I will be interested, I mean, if, if you see issues like that where, where we need to improve behavior, you should probably issue a JIRA. I don't necessarily, you know, the JIRAs that are sort of suggestions for improving things, I don't always respond to immediately, but I'll, I'll get to them eventually. Um, and there will be continued common cartridge work, uh, particularly on export. Uh, I want to export pretty much everything. The problem is not everything matches. Common cartridge is a, a very limited specification. They don't allow for all the, all the complexities of content that can be in a real learning management system. But one of the goals is to be able to sort of, art, if you're a faculty member, to be able to take everything away. And so what I, I will probably do some, some exports that, you know, if you re-imported it, you'd have to do some work to make it usable, but at least you won't like lose any content. Um, and I'm also considering, and, and this is still, I'm not sure whether I want to do this, I'm considering doing some special annotations so that I save, save things that aren't in the spec that if it gets re-imported into Sakai would allow it to come back with a bit more fidelity than, uh, than if I, I only use the, the, the generic uh, facilities. Uh, so let me say a little bit more about export since I think, yes? Uh, you might just talk a bit earlier, but I'd like to say this question in front of everybody so you can see what kind of support there is for the next step. And that is exporting from the Molette table. Importing. Yeah, you mean importing. Yeah. What, what export right. from the Molette table so that it will then import cleanly into lessons? I think that's a really big deal for some of us. Yeah. I just wanted to bring it out there in case anybody else wanted to say their uh, agreement with us and receive part of the issue. Yeah, it's not the first time somebody's asked that question. If anybody is interested in that, come talk to me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> is that Nicola? That's Nicola. Yeah. yeah, make sure everyone knows that is Nicola. Nicola. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, I, people ask why I did export since it just makes it easier to get out. We actually had schools tell me that they were not willing to accept lessons unless they were sure that they could, could get out of it, you know, if they needed to go to something else. And while I understand that, using Sakai, because this is the first common cartridge export for Sakai as a whole, I mean, just not using lessons doesn't solve your problem. You still won't be able to get your content out of Sakai until we have export. But, but, but we do now have that. Uh, so what's in export? Um, it's, it's only the things that Sakai, or that, um, that lesson supports and that common cartridge supports. So it supports quizzes, um, forum topics, and assignments. And although I will export assignments correctly, if you choose the 1.2 option for export, I have to tell you that nobody else will import them. There are a number of tools that claim support for 1.2, but they don't actually do it. Uh, and the only real difference between 1.1 and 1.2 is the presence of assignments. Um, I've done testing with Canvas, Blackboard, and Moodle. 
Uh, Moodle, I've been unable to find uh, somebody running Moodle that does export. Supposedly their most recent code does, so I've only been able to try import. However, with Blackboard and Canvas, um, I have taken a fairly complex site, imported it into the other system, then exported it, and read the export to see what was lost. And, you know, lots of things are lost. The biggest loss is the inline <coughs> stuff. So if you have a block of content in your page, uh, you know, as a, as a block of HTML, because the common cartridge spec doesn't allow for that, it has to be exported as a separate HTML page. And, you know, that means that's the way the other site will see it, and when they export it, it'll come back into Sakai as a, a separate page, except for Blackboard, in which case it'll come back buried under two levels of page because of the way Blackboard does their imports and exports. Um, there are issues with all the systems. They're relatively minor. You know, there's certain things that they don't do or, or do weirdly. But by and large, you can get the content properly into the three listed systems. Um, in order to, so as in the process of doing export, obviously I tested our exports against our imports. And I had to do a bit of work on import uh, because there were things that weren't in the sample tests that they gave me that I simply never discovered until I started trying to export all the weird combinations. So at the same time in 293 that we check in export, we'll check in a number of, of robustness fixes to people. Um, continual work I pretty much already talked about. Uh, and probably I should do uh, you know, and this is really only of interest in, in the case where somebody is at a site is actually trying to leave Sakai. It probably does make sense to have some kind of slash direct thing that would cause it to export everybody. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure in what form, you know, a one terabyte zip file or, or what, but, but there probably should be a way to do both exports. Um, and you know some of the some of the contrib tools I haven't supported yet. I'm not going to start looking at Name8 until after uh, I get all the options in Samago because once I do that, I don't think it'll be all that hard to to, to move it to Name. Now these are actually this slide is from a year ago. The the core functionality of the product hasn't changed. This is just for anybody who isn't familiar with lessons. Um, you know, it, it shows how you put together a lesson. And, you know, some of the things are added as HTML. The, the, the headers are just plain done with an HTML editor. And then, then there's links to a bunch of different tools. I mean, it's a pretty typical use of, of lessons, although one that doesn't use any graphics. Uh, here's an example taken from one of our sites, just showing you that, yes, we can, in fact, embed video. Um, and I have recently updated to the most recent uh, JW player um, just to make sure we keep up to date. And it will do HTML5 when it needs to. Uh, this is to show you, you know, the UI if you want to change, if you know, if you want to change, uh, you know, set requirements to, to release that kind of stuff. It, it's a jQuery pop-up. Now, here's an here is an example of the inline question. Um, it's a, a simple multiple choice question. And what I've shown you at the bottom is a bar chart, which is what you would display if you were doing it as a poll. Uh, you can also connect it to a grade book if you like. Um, probably, you know, if, if you were using it for more, you know, checking students' progress. Now, this is just a very bare bones uh, inline question. I, you know, if it turns out that people really find it useful and, and want, there are lots of things that we could do. We could do, you know, two questions. We could do more sophisticated tests for whether you're allowed to continue. There's just all, you know, there's an infinite number of options, but we decided to start it simple. Uh, here's an example of a rubric. This is a student content page with not very exciting student content. Uh, but there's the rubric, and so all, all the other students, you can choose whether the, the, the student can evaluate themselves, but it, at least all the other students will, will see that rubric and, you know, just click on a box. And what the student, 
and faculty member if they like uh, ends up seeing is just a count of the you know there's will just be a count in each cell showing the number of people who um, who clicked in that cell. I'm not currently computing any uh, statistics. Again, until we get more of a sense of use cases, uh, I didn't want to complicate it by you know by more complex reports. Um, some comments on implementation for those of you who are interested in doing development. I think there's about one and a half man years in this. Uh, most of it by um, Eric Jenny, who is who was a, a high school student at the time. He's now a, a freshman at University of Maryland, uh, just finished his freshman year. Uh, and and then I, you know, I did part of it. I have started having some of my staff do work. Uh, the, the rubric was actually done by two of my staff, uh, one of whom is a student. So that, that's roughly what we did. Um, there's the second bullet point is a, a list of the, the tools that I support. As you can see, I've tried to support not just the core tools, but some of the more commonly used contrib. Uh, some of that depends on other people. Yaft, uh, I haven't written any of the Yaft code. Um, as I note, the, the difficulties in the thing and the reason why we don't always exactly understand what's happening in the tool, it just has to do with the, the, the limitations of Sakai's design. I mean, I have to go groveling around in, in all the innards of the, of the other tools. There's just limits to how far I want to do that. Um, features, just the implementation specific features. When, when you look up, you know, like if you click on a link, and it's a PDF file. You normally expect that it's going to go through slash access slash content, which is a normal web link uh, way of getting into resources. I actually have a, slash, a separate slash access slash lessons builder because I have my own accessibility. I mean, suppose you have in lesson builder said the person can't get to this link uh, until they've passed this test. I have to be able to enforce all of those links, which means that my access has to be separate. And so if you really care about that stuff, we don't think most people do, uh, you can protect this stuff. You, you can basically hide it in the resources tool. And what happens is I override the, the, the hidden attribute. And so if, if you hide it, then, then I'll control all the access. Oh, oh really? Yeah. <coughs> that's, why, that's why we ended up with the hide and disable. I know, but I always thought if you hid and, and resources, you then block anybody from seeing it. You do, but I override that. And that's now? Or the yes, that's now. Yep. So, I mean, one thing you can do is you can hide the tool, but you can also, in resources, hide a folder. What I would do is hide the folder. And I would I, love to hide the folder from the faculty <laughs> yeah. So you could run a con job that will do it, disable that access to resources. <laughs> no, I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And, you know, it's always a question as to whether to do that. I mean, Malate has its own separate area, and that always frustrated me as an instructor because I couldn't actually yeah. see, you know, I couldn't do quota maintenance. Order, so I thought the lesser of the evils was to make it show in resources, even though I agree with you, the faculty member can muck with it. And that will cause problems. <laughs> yeah. Or you said, yeah. One more option of the 99,000. Uh, right. Uh, and site, those of you who've tried to do things like site copy and import, uh, site, the, the copy functionality in site manage was never designed for a tool like lessons that can have multiple occurrences. And it's just been a continuing battle. In 2.9, I think, all the options, I've had breakfast, and I'm not sure whether it's somebody needed to somebody needed to do a step that they weren't doing or whether there's an actual bug still there. It is certainly possible in the um, uh, The technology, it's pretty standard Sakai technology. Uh, it, there's actually a thing called Simple Page Tool. We started with that, and you can still see names if you're doing the development. Some of the tools are still called, some of the internal stuff is still called Simple Page, and that's why. Uh, it uses RSF uh, as the presentation framework. Um, again, it's sort of a lesser of evils. RSF isn't well supported, but 
seemed to be the least objectionable of, of all the, the standard frameworks used within Sakai. Um, Eric came away hating it, but but he had never, but he hasn't ever tried to use JSF for a project this big. I guarantee you, he would have hated it even more. Yes. Um, he uses Hibernate, and the real reason we used Hibernate was mostly just to get database independent creation of tables. We do not allow Hibernate to generate complex queries because I don't trust it. So I've, I've handwritten all the joins. Uh, jQuery is obviously used because you know to do pop-ups and other stuff like that. And, the, and and over the last year, as we've added functionality, the newer functionality has tended to make more use of AJAX and sophisticated jQuery. As Eric and I have learned more about AJAX, um, so you know you'll find when you grade items um, because you have a whole screen that has a bunch of students and their items. We don't like the idea of having every time you put a grade in, have to you know submit the page and, and have it redisplayed. So that is in fact done by AJAX. You type a number in and get carriage return. It'll AJAX back, and the little check mark appears next to it just to verify that it's actually happened. So so we have used AJAX for stuff like that, but it's it's not the most groundbreaking UI ever. It's, it's just it's tried to use reasonable approaches. I believe that's the next slide. <laughs> okay, so that's basically where we are. Um, I have plenty of time for questions, you So one of the things that we are trying to do was import a zip file in lessons. Yep. And uh, so if a website has got custom CSS and all that stuff and bring it in yep. the zip. You can do it. It's called, um, and I didn't add this, so I didn't name the function. It's okay. called something like upload website. Yeah, but it was try it was ignoring the CSS, so... I don't know if there is. Well, that's a matter of how you write your URLs. Okay. If you write your URLs so that everything is relative, then the CSS will work. If you use absolute URLs, then you know it's all a matter of where it gets uploaded, and chances are it won't match the absolute URL in in the in the code. But I mean, we don't do anything to stop CSS if you, as long okay. as the URLs are correct. Yeah. For people that want to reuse um, lessons in a future course, so they teach it this semester, and they're going to teach it next semester. Yep. What's the current way that that's happening with with duplicate site, with import from site, and also on on site? Yep, creation? those should all work. They all should work with them. Yep. in two nine. Yep. Yep. And that one, that the links all stay to the current menu. Yes, they do. Isn't there a wind to that? Okay, so so aside, I mean, there, there is the draft issue, and 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 I've and I've and I've had complaints that I show links that don't work yet. But I thought it was better to migrate the link, even though it didn't work yet. I agree, but it does migrate. But it does migrate now. So and exactly how to do that migration turns out to have there's lots of inner inner details. So there is a mechanism for updating links. The problem is that not all tools participate in the mechanism. So what happens is, if the tool participates in the mechanism, I update the link cleanly. If the tool does not participate, then I update it based on the title. So, for, so you know, the assignment, I'll, I'll, I'll link to an assignment of the same title and just hope that that gets it. And normally it will. And in Samago, Samago presents a very special problem because there, I can't create an I, I can't create an assessment that somebody could take because what you create is a core assessment, then you have to publish it. And when you publish it, the URLs change. So what I actually do is I produce a dummy link that looks like it's real, but it isn't. And when you click on it, Lessons actually checks to see whether the test has gotten published. And you know, so whether there, there's now something with the same title, and if so, it then goes and updates the thing, and then it works. It's disgusting, but, it, <laughs> but in most cases, it does work. And it's better than what we have. Yes. Um, could somebody pass, could you pass me that chair? I need to sit down. Sure. 
one of the problems with getting old is I can't stand up as long as I used to. Yeah. So will they fix that's in two point nine? That's in two nine. Yeah. And I mean. Um, I believe it's in 290. And I mean, the, the other thing is, you, you don't have to use the one that's, the lessons that's in whatever you, you, you can use the, the 290X, or you can use, I'm sorry, it would be 14X of lessons with anything in 28. So, you know, if, if, if you're missing some feature, the, the, the 14X branch is pretty stable by now. I mean, I, I don't put stuff in unless it's been pretty well tested, so it's pretty, it should be safe to update to that. I thought you talked about improving some of your link improvement heuristics after 2.9, that you've gotten better, but there's some places you've improved at. It is possible that there were some improvements after 2.9, though. I, I have to go back and this. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question that it's kind of a higher level design courses issue, and um, I've been teaching online for 13 years, and our program has been teaching online for 16 years. And we've seen a general progression of faculty away from weeks, topics, and readings to activity, discussions, topics, uh, and readings down here. So there's been this reversal yep. with much more attention on questions and activities yep. rather than giving. And I'm worried about whether or not lessons are flexible enough to allow for that progression, or will it trap people into a kind of teaching format that came from a different yep. place? I, sh I sure hope it's flexible enough. If, I mean, if you try it and you find that it doesn't work, I would very much appreciate you know, suggestions for, for, what it, for what you actually need to support that teaching style. I agree with you completely. And one of the reasons why I was hoping people wouldn't actually use some of the functionality that I put in it was, as a student, I don't like, I don't like the lockstep approach that says you're not allowed to look ahead. That's just stupid. Uh, so, I mean, we provide the functionality, but as a teacher, I wouldn't use it. Yes, it scared me when I heard the talk about, let's lock this down so faculty can't touch it. Um, <laughs> because really, you want to you want to allow right. for, the, for the development. Online learning is a whole different way of thinking about teaching and learning. I, and it I, takes time to kind of get that development. And I agree with you. You want yeah. to shape tools so that they Provide and encourage right. the kind of development that we see taking places in people that it's been a long time. I, I agree with you. And basically, if you if you don't go into the the pop up and set constraints, then then there are no constraints. I mean, the content is all there. If the student wants to jump around, they can jump around. There is simply no problem doing that. I mean, there is at the upper right hand an index of of all of the the content. In, in the site, so if, if you remember, oh, I think I think I saw that, but I don't remember where. You know, you, you, you can see all the pages. You know, and search helps that as well. Yeah, search helps that as well. And your ability to do network style linking rather than hierarchy style linking also kind of right. Right. fancies that cause. Right. One thing that might sorry. Oh, one thing that might address that is one thing I, I was building a lesson to learn. I think I'm in an older version is moving content on that round and changing your yep. mind. Um, I don't know how that's working. And I also like I like the index pages, and I feel yep. like that's sort of shoved off in the corner. But I almost feel like I would almost sometimes want that as my front page. And that's interesting. You, you know, and because I like the idea of the checking yep. off of, of things yep. for people. It wouldn't but, actually be hard to make that as front page. I mean, it's just a link. Right. Um, and can you link directly to a lesson on the page from somewhere else? I believe so, because the index does it. So if you simply do a copy and paste of whatever URL appears on the index page, that should work for anyone. In the locking down comment, there's not so much locking down for lessons, but it's really locking down the little scratch area that he puts into resources. Right. That's what you're yeah, yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Like, they might like tear up the CSS file. Like, why is this here? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. It. They, they were talking about locking lessons. Yeah. So, like locking down lessons up is like a little secret stash of files. Yeah. But but you don't have to do that. 
And if I were teaching, particularly for an upper level course, I wouldn't. I would organize the material in some way that makes sense. I would encourage students to explore in whatever order they like. And, and yeah, that, I mean, that, both the kid who built the tool and I believe in more flexibility. Yeah, it's internal structure is not a strict hierarchy. Yeah, so, yeah it's, it's just not a strict hierarchy. It's a suggestion. And then, yeah. as we, you know, I've avoided using something like Blackboard at the beginning because it was so teacher centric. Yeah. yeah, and so I've gone, I've gone and used tools that really allow for more of a community building approach or a knowledge building approach. And it's, yep. you, know, you, you, you build into your tools your theory of learning. I agree. And, you know, if tools really place teachers at the center and downplay the role that students play in. Well, I mean, this is one of the reasons why I've, I've sort of been scratching my head saying, what kind of interactivity can I get into right. the tool? Right. And so it's why we put the comments in. <laughs> so you can stick, you know, a, a full sort of threaded, not really threaded, but almost threaded discussion at any point in the tool. Uh, and we now have rubrics which will allow students to evaluate. I mean, I've tried to do everything I can think of that makes sense in the tool as opposed to something separate like a wiki. Right. Uh, but I'm open to suggestions because I really would like to encourage what you're talking about and not the, the old style, you know, program learning. Oh, I hate that. So what's the best way to see what's on the horizon in lessons and give feedback on what Michigan's doing? Um, well, I mean, the, unfortunately, the only real official way to do this stuff is, is to file JIRAs. And I mean, we, I do look at the JIRAs. I don't know if anybody else does, but I do. And, and we do sometimes have a JIRA, which is we need to figure out a way to do this, and then a bunch of people comment on it. And the JIRAs have comments, and, and you can use them that way. Now, you can probably use a Confluence page the same way. But, but, the, but the JIRA is the, you know, gets everything in one place, so you don't forget it, hopefully. I would say the Chuck is one of the best communicators of what's going on, but the, but the messages are sometimes wrong. But you're, like, yes. you're <laughs> saying that, that um, um, you work is going on in Michigan to redo the UI, but is, is that... That was a, I mean, they, they put a jury in before they started. Okay. Yeah. And they'll get communicated to. I mean, part of the key of all of this is, you know, TCC likes to see communication, so the stuff doesn't surprise anybody, right? Whether it's it's just that some of the things are kind of nearly written, right? Right. I, I mean, I, so one, you, you notice I, I said that to some extent this year's talk was, was a surprise to me. That I didn't expect to see. I mean, some of the things that, that other people have done, I, I, you know, I didn't know it was going to happen a year ago. And I don't even hear about them until somebody says, uh, okay, we now have, you know, Project Katai came in and said we need to integrate lessons into Project Katai, and they were ready to start work, and that's when I heard about it. <laughs> and I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm the same way. I, I'm not going to start, I'm not going to say in public I want to do this thing until I have a pretty good idea of how I'm going to do it and have the resources out to it. Otherwise, I look stupid. Uh, so, so I understand exactly. But I do have, I mean, I put JIRA entries in, and this is something that's changed. As, as more and more people depend on the tool and other developers start working, I've become a lot more careful with, with documenting the process. So I'm very careful now, whenever I check a change in the code, there is a JIRA file. And, and the check-in will always set, will always have the, the JIRA associated. And when I start working on a project, I will, well, I'll create a JIRA at the beginning. So, I mean, there was a JIRA that said we need to export for a couple of months before I actually started the code. And that's about the only way I know to, to, to play the game. And it's worth noting that anyone can make a JIRA account, and you can, there's a facility to watch if the JIRA that you are interested in. Yeah. And you can, if you contribute, you know, you automatically watch it. But, um, this is something that you like. If you're missing to have anything to add, if you want to know what happened to it, make an account, watch it, and you'll get an email notification when there are any updates on that. So um, that's a good way to track what's going on. Yeah. So, uh, to be perfectly
be honest, one of the problems now is I'm not a programmer, okay? I'm a manager. And so I don't have full-time programming. Um, probably what's going to happen over the next year is I'm not going to do as much code. I'm going to spend more time just keeping, you know, keeping track of contributions of other people and, and making sure that things get in. Uh, I got distracted by, you know, for about a month doing CC export, and I just I stopped responding to other people's cheers and to some extent to my own staff's requests for management. I can't do that very often, okay? Uh, so, so, so you're not going to see a lot of bursts of code like that for me, uh, I don't think. But get, get, get them later again. And one more person. Yeah, I, I, I understand that probably is necessary. Okay? Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you.